arms of God. Yeah. Yes, you're welcome to God's presence. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. In one minute, why don't you just go ahead and just give God praise for bringing you into his presence tonight. Why not just open your mouth and just appreciate God for another time in his presence. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Say, bless Thank you, Father. Come on, just go ahead and just let everything within you just bless his name tonight. Let everything within you just give him praise tonight. Let everything within you just say something sweet to him tonight. Let everything within you just say, Father, we bless your name. Come on, just go ahead and just say, Father, we say thank you. Come on, come on, come on. If you are grateful, why not just open your mouth and just say, Father, we exalt you. Father, we give you all the praise that you deserve. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The Bible says, who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto thee? Why not just go ahead and just give him all the praise that he deserves? Why not just go ahead? Why not just go ahead? Why not just go ahead? And just appreciate him because he's God in your life. But despite everything you are going through, he has been coming through for us. Why not just say, Father, we thank you. Uh, Father, we exalt you. Come on, just go ahead and just say, Father, we exalt your name. Uh, Father, we magnify your name. Uh, Father, we exalt you, exalt you, exalt you, exalt you. Uh, the Bible says, a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand. They say, we will not come near you. Uh, why not just appreciate him because no evil has come near your dwelling place tonight. Uh, why not just appreciate him and just say, Father, we thank you. Uh, oh, Father, we exalt you. Uh, Father, we magnify your name. Just go ahead, just go ahead, just go ahead. Uh, and just bless the name of the Lord. Uh, let everything within you, the Bible says, let everything that has breath, uh, bless the Lord. Uh, why not just lift up your voice and let everything within you just bless his name tonight. Uh, why not just open your mouth and just just let everything within you bless his name tonight. Uh, let your voice say thank you to him tonight. Uh, let everything within you, let everything within you just say, Father, we exalt your name. Uh, oh, Father, we exalt your name. Uh, Father, we glorify your name. Uh, we bow before your throne tonight. Uh, we bow before your throne tonight. Uh, we bow before your throne tonight. Uh, we are here to acknowledge the fact that it's been you all the way. Uh, we are here to acknowledge the fact that it's been you all the way. Uh, come on, just go ahead and just magnify him. Uh, come on, just go ahead and just give him praise. Uh, so bad that Kasaka Kataya da Badaba, Lega Kosege Bakaso Payada Badaba, Lega Taya Bakaso Tayada Balakaso Palada Badabada, Leba so Bala Kasata Kataya da Bada, Leba Kosege Bakasata Kataya da Badaba, Leba Kaso Paya Bakaso Balaka Sataka Kakataya da Ba, Leba so Bala Kasataya da Bakako Kayada Badaba, Lega no Bala Kasata Kata Nada Bayada Ba. He has kept you through January. Uh. He has kept you through February. Uh. Today is the last day in the month of March. Uh. Why not just open your mouth and just appreciate him? Uh. Why not just open your mouth and just give him all the praise that he deserves? Uh. Oh my life, you have been faithful. Oh my life, you have been faithful. Of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. Of God, come on, let your voice just sing of the goodness of God tonight. Come on, let your voice just sing of the goodness of God tonight. Come on, let your voice just sing of the goodness of God tonight. If God has been been good to you, come on, just open your mouth and just magnify His name. Oh, Kapai. 
ya da bana kasota ya da bana bana ba le bana do ba kasota la kata bana da ba ya come on just go ahead uh, and just bless his name ma uh. oh just go ahead uh. we have come to seek his face tonight uh. we have come to seek his face tonight uh. why not just open your mouth ah uh. ka bana da ba sata ka ya da ba I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Just leave us easy so I can walk right through it. Ah, you drown my feelings in perfect love. I can't cut a yada bada ba. Ooh, 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 ooh
Come on. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is that for you to do? He doesn't exist. He can never ever exist. I don't know that problem you have brought to him tonight. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is that for you to do? He doesn't exist. He can never ever exist because you are bigger than all my problems. My God is bigger than all my troubles. You are bigger than all my troubles. Ah, God is bigger than every mountain. I cannot, I cannot see. Ah, balada kata ya na balada maga. Ye balada sada balada kaya na balada. Ye balada kato balada kaya na balada. You are bigger than all the problems of God. You are bigger than all those problems of God. You are bigger than that failure of God. You are bigger than that need of God. Yeah, you are bigger than that sickness of God. You are bigger than that mountain of God. You are now mountain because of the You shall be made a splendor. You are now mountain before the night tonight. You shall be made a splendor.
that we, that we miss the presence of God. We are so burdened with our needs. In fact, we are so distracted by the challenges of life that we miss the presence of God. But the primary essence, God is not a God of miracles. God is a God of relationships. God's desire, God's burning desire, He has called us not to perform miracles, but He has called us to be with us. Brethren, today we are going to pray. We are going to seek the face of God that will be transformed in His presence. When we say, let it rain, let the rain of your presence fall on us, that there will be a transformation. The Bible says in the book of Luke that as Jesus prayed, his countenance was changed. The essence of prayer is that prayer will change us. And I want us to lift up our voice and say, Father, change me in your presence. Father, change me in your presence. When the Bible says that out of your belly shall flow forth the blood of living water. It shall not be rivers that are led by you, but it shall be an outflowing of the Spirit of God. Father, change me in your presence. Change me in your presence. Father, change me in your presence. That I may be more like you. Father, so that I may know him. As we travel in his presence, that we may know him. That we may know God for who he is. That we may know our Lord for who he is. The Bible records of Moses. That Moses went after Moses first time in the presence of the Lord. That when he appeared, men will not stand the glory of God at his face. Let the glory of God be infused in us as we tarry in his presence. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer first. With prayer, then you get the supplication. Let us pray. Father, visit us again we need your presence. Visit me again, Jehovah. I need your presence in my life. Visit me again, Jehovah. I need your transforming presence in my life. Everything that has held me back, everything, every iota of flesh, everything in me that is flesh, Lord, let your fire consume them this night. May I be submitted to you as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice today, O God. Father Lord, may I be submitted to you today as a living sacrifice. May I be transformed in your presence. Godliness has been given. Everything we need in this life has been given and in that same scripture. But it needs that scripture needs to become life for you. When your faith, when your spirit 
is awakened by that scripture, then your faith. You see, you cannot have faith in a vacuum. It's not possible. But when the scripture speaks to you, what did the Bible tell them? The Lord said to Moses, go. And he went. And he was going with the conviction that I have been sent. That is what happens when the word of God quickens your spirit. Faith comes by hearing. Have you heard? I want us to pray this night. Father, that my spirit speak to my spirit man that I may hear your voice. Lord, speak to my spirit man that I may hear your voice. I do not want to continue to walk by my own strength. When you said that by strength shall no man prevail. You might have been walking on a particular path and it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any progress. What have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Has the Spirit speak, spoken to you? You know, it is important that you understand. You know, the, the Lord said to Samuel, Go. And I, I will ask, uh, tomorrow I'll send you a man. And he sent him Saul. And he anointed Saul. When the Lord sent him again, he came to the house of Jesse. And because he saw Eliab, Eliab had that same statue of Saul. He said, Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord has moved. Praise the Lord. We need to hear so that we know that we, we will know when the Lord has moved. It said, not only, it is not about the stature. What the Lord is telling you today will not be what the Lord is telling you in a week's time. Pray. Father, let me hear your voice. Let the word of truth speak in my spirit, man. Lord, that I may hear you. Along this path that I walk, that I may find direction, that I may find guidance, that I may find instruction by your words. Le prata sarobo, matarata sarobo, berika tatarobo, sarobo kolebe, mashe sarobo, sokelebo soko, liza saya prasa kolebo sati ya rakata, berisa kolebo rakoko, kolebo sati kolebo, liza kolebo prasa kolebo, berisa kolebo kolebo sati. Quicken my faith by your word, Father. Quicken my faith by your word. Quicken my faith. Quicken my faith that I may stand. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Let God give you the word that will sustain you. Even in this foreign land, let God give you a word that will sustain you. Effort is good. It is good to strive. But the word of God comes with grace. There is a grace that the word of God brings that makes your way easy. Pray, Father Lord, in this land, grant me, give me a word that will sustain me in the mighty name of Jesus. Faithful Father Lord, we pray. We come in our thousands to you. We're in this land, oh God. We're in this land, looking onto the cross. Father, we're asking even in this land that you yes. give us a word that will sustain us. Give us a word that will sustain us. Give us a word that will daily quicken us. Give us a word that will daily keep us by your side. A word that will daily keep us by the cross. That even when our feet is falling, Father Lord, your word will be able to hold us. Hold us. Even when our feet is falling, your word will be able to sustain us. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, there's something the scripture said in the book of Psalms, which is very instructive for us Christians. And very instructive for even in the, you know, a lot we are, we are praying all the time. But like I said, God is a God of relationship. He's not necessarily a God of miracles. Miracles are what I, 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 I will term collateral. collateral just um, just incidental in our relationships with God. So he said of the Israelites, he said, he made way his he made known his ways unto Moses, his works unto the children of Israel. You see, it is not it's not difficult for God to walk. But the, what the Bible says, 
with God nothing shall be impossible but it's more instructive to know his ways it's more instructive it's more sustaining if we know his ways I say, Father teach me your ways teach me your ways there are not so many of us that are actually seeking the ways of God we are seeking the works of his hands the works of his hands they will come and go manna came it stayed for 40 years but it eventually went but the ways of God are enduring. The ways of God are enduring and they are eternal. Father, teach us your ways. Lord, teach us your ways. That we may know how to walk. That we may know the path to go. Teach us. And that is the essence of prayer. If you notice, if you notice that in the Bible, anytime, almost every time God has sent a man on assignment, he has never told him the end from the beginning. He will just say, go. As he goes, he keeps instructing him. And I want us to make that prayer. Just like the Abraham servant said in, Gen in, in Genesis. He said, Blessed be the Lord of my of my the, the, the God of my Lord, whom I be along the way, the Lord led me. Pray that even as you are along the way in this land, the Lord will lead you. As you move along the way in your pursuit in this land, may your God lead you. Father Lord, we are in your presence. Teach us your way. As we go along this path, may you lead us. May you lead us, oh God. May the, the attractions that are by our side, the attractions, the tears that the enemy has sown, and the tears that the enemy will sow, may they not deceive us. But Lord, may your word strengthen and sharpen our understanding that we may know your ways. That we may know your ways. Let's begin to speak in tongues. Resume Lord Imanta Brody Balasha Badia. Speak in tongues. Resume Lord Imanta Tabade Badia. The Bible says that speak in tongues edifies his own spirit. Read Abasha Prabato Kataman Vedia. Read Vedia de Vedia de Bonska Prabos de Freddy Minta Balea Baba. Rakta Lada Babasha Patabada Bia Patabalea. We have four prayers to pray, but we need to pray in tongues for Swadosi. Read Abakata Bazataria Damata Kabaya Dababa. Read Togata Bababa Shapata Gadabayaba. Open your mouth wide, regulate, reza bata balayabada baba. And speak in tongues, reza kata balayabada. Building up yourself for your most holy faith to approve. Beyond the rabbis, the rabbis understand the rabbis. Hey, 
you see in this land as a way of shifting focuses of taking people's focus of Jesus now Matthew chapter 14 but because of our time we are not going to read I will explain something Peter made a prayer point to Jesus it was not Jesus that actually told him I can allow you walk on water Peter made the prayer point saying if it's you Lord bid me come so Jesus answered his prayers so when Jesus answered his prayers he stepped on the waters and it was what was moving but all of a sudden he shifted his focus away from Jesus and he started considering what his prayer point made available. Someone is not here. Now, the answer to his prayer point was now his focus. He shifted his focus from the one that gave him that particular substance that he prayed for. And it might look like us, we know what we do. You know, we, don't. we pray to God, God, I want to be here, I want to be there, I want you to give me a child. But immediately we get those thoughts, we shift our focus away from the giver to the gift. And majority of the time, not majority of the time, it is a clear indication that the sinking is inevitable. And that is what the land does. I know people that pray in their own nations. They pray to God if I could be here. But the, the, the overwhelmingness of life when they got here shifted their focus away from Jesus. We are going to pray. <laughs> the Bible says they look unto him and they were lightened. It is only by looking unto him alone that light can come. Hey, the Bible says they looked unto him and they were lightened. As more and more we behold the mirror, the glory of the Lord, it says there is a metamorphosis. Napos Capradeva. Holy Spirit, help me to stay focused on Jesus. Help me to stay focused on Jesus. Confusion is as a result of shifting away your focus from Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me to stay focused on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on the giver, not on the gift. In a cause, pray the pastor. Focus on Jesus. Riba Shafayala. Confusion arises when the grace is on Jesus. People shift and focus. The Bible says he began to sing. It was not an immediate stop. It was not a song so he began. It was that was it was singing. Riba Tagabayala. Yaba Shafayala. God, let me have a mission. He got the ambition. He has a life for life out of him. And he was he's now staying focused on everything outside Jesus. He gives him a free flow. Holy Ghost, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Let my focus, my attention, my gaze be fixed on you, Holy Spirit. Help me, help me on Jesus. Let my eyes be filled up to fix on you. Because it is there we are to to navigate in the waters of life. You are seeing the root of the problem. You used to be on fire there, brother. You got here the prayer of the story that's the best. Looking at Jesus, resorted the offer and finished. Rebo anyone that will finish, you are brought to tell you and finish what was the focus of Jesus. Rebo the level of the foolish brings this every one of them because they do not know how to get into the city. They know the city is a person over here. You know we are not said you are going in that ocean. So they will shut up. But because you do not know how to, and Jesus is the way to chapter 21 verse 27 he says i will overturn 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 now when 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 jesus said very very less unto you he is trying to be emphasize on something it's not his camera do you understand so when he says i will overturn overturn and overturn 
eat and it shall be no more that there will not be any thorn anymore until he comes whose rise it was right is it is and i will give it in meaning there is a portion that is for every one of us hello there is a portion and if you remember the Old Testament, God told them, I won't chase every of the parasites, the Jebusites, the, uh, the, 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 the every one of them, I won't chase them off the land that I'm giving to you, lest animals will take over the place. Now it means your space in life can never be can never be vacant. Somebody is not here. Mm. Now the, the throne, that throne, queen throne, belongs to Esther. But first it must be on that throne. See, the, the throne is already created, you are not creating it. Joseph got into the land, not not fashioning a throne. There is, a throne. there is a throne that has been on ground. Your space is there. Somebody is occupying the space illegally. Mm. So you are going to declare, Father, let there be an overturn. An overturn. And an overturn. Now I have arrived. Ah, let there be an overturn. Keep telling it. I have arrived. Let there be an overturn. An overturn. An overturn. It is my right. I have come to take my place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your soul will never be in Jesus name we are praying somebody is not understanding that prayer life does not deliver to you what is rightly yours life does not give you what you deserve life gives to you what you fight for and what you make a demand for now the bible says and that night will not the king sleep God can withdraw some people's sleep because of you see effort is one thing it is not a man that is on one Life is too short to be running into your own steps. You will grow gray before you see some light. Some of us are right now the wings of grace and the wings of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone who buy my shoes has gone over time, over time, over time, over time, over time. Over time, it is my right. Give it to me in the name of Jesus. I bless a demand. This is a prayer of prayer. My space here. Record shall be In Jesus mighty name we have prayed I want to hear your amen tonight In Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen Did you just pray in the last one hour? You've been tarrying for one hour Non-stop In Jesus mighty name we have prayed Luke chapter 18 verse 1 I want you to sit down. Sit down. Let's 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 give context to this, and then we will rise up to pray again. Please celebrate Jesus tonight with your hands. Can you celebrate Jesus? I mean, you have been praying for an hour, and I was at the back looking at some people, and I make bold to say that the struggle is real. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the living Jesus. The Bible says in Luke 18.1 Please look on the screen. It says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought. Not that men should or that men will or that men shall. He said, We ought to. The scripture here is saying that in our DNA, the one who made us, Jesus was the one speaking here. The one who made us wired how that we must require oxygen to survive. He embedded in our DNA from the studios of creation. He said, we came with a wiring of prayer. That we ought to pray. And at any time you stop praying, what do you say is happening to you? You see, you are losing hearts. 
King James says, you are fainting. Life is leaving you. Anytime you stop praying. We've called tonight the night of prevailing prayers. It's an evening that the Lord wants to shift certain things in your life. Will you allow him? Will you knock at heaven's gate tonight? And not turn back until the door is open. Jesus said we ought to pray. It wasn't a suggestion. He wasn't suggesting it to us. He said it's a necessity. That so long as you're on these checkered pavements of mortality, on this part of the divide, you ought to pray. Have you wondered why it is the deepest part of your spiritual journey that Satan fights the most? Oh, he is good with a wonderful atmosphere. A church where the lighting is perfect, the suit is solid, the stage is awesome. But God might not be on that stage because the altar has no fire. It might be the most beautiful. Crowd are trooping in. It might be the music because music makes you emotional if you don't check it. It does not go beyond the ceiling of where you are singing from. If the altar this Jesus is talking about is not active in your life, that heaven knows that any time you lift up your voice, angels are at ease. That one of the sons or daughters of Zion has begun to call on the Father. If that has not started happening to you, there's a problem. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 This was Jesus speaking. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Look on the screen. Perhaps the greatest of them all in that generation who saw another side of Jesus. Because the Jesus that the twelve experienced was the Son of Man. The one who has not been glorified. This one saw the glorified Jesus. Who was already sitting at the right hand of the Father. And Paul is saying, it didn't say season. It's not winter, summer and what's the other one? He says, oh, you must pray non-stop. You see, any man who enters into this realm, you are a danger to the kingdom of darkness. You have entered into the generation that is unstoppable. If you move into this, have you asked yourself, why do I struggle to pray? It's a question to ask yourself every time. It brings you to a state of consciousness. Why do I struggle to pray? And if your prayer journey is still in the morning, you wake up, devotion. At night, you pray, you go to bed. If that's all that you do, you are still a baby. He says without season, you're driving, you're praying. You are walking, you're praying. You are taking your shower, you're praying. You are going for shopping, you're praying. Anywhere you feel that your mind is blank, you're blasting tongues. Because he says you must pray without season. No end to it. Do you know that flies don't perch on hot stones? <laughs> Have you seen where fire is burning and the fly just came, came, let me go and test this fire. You become a danger to the forces of darkness if you pray always. Brethren, what we are doing tonight is not to mark register. Mm. James 5 from verse 13. We got here by prayers, child of God. We got here by prayers. Anytime I do not find myself in his presence, I feel there's a vacuum. Something is missing. Anytime I wake up all through the night I slept without talking to him before day, I'm talking about before morning devotion. I feel there's something missing. <coughs> James 5. The Bible says, Is anyone among you suffering? He should do what? Let him pray. He said, Let him pray. 
is as simple as it's been said. So the question to you is, are you suffering? The antidote to it is prayer. There is no... See, the Bible did make sure that it didn't put anybody's name there. If he had said, is James suffering? Let him pray. He said he was written to James. The Bible was careful to make sure it to anyone. It was an open-ended one. He said, is anyone among you suffering? He didn't say you should go to your pastor. Because we've made men of God idols today. Some people cannot hit the road to make a long journey without calling their pastor. Is the road clear? Should I go? Should I not go? If it's not clear, please tell me. Let me stay back. He said, is any among you suffering? Let me pray. How long you stay in that state of suffering dependent on how fast you wake up to the, to the, to, to the task of prayer. How long you dwell in that place of suffering is dependent absolutely on how fast you apply the antidote, which is prayer. Is anyone cheerful? He said, sing, worship. Next verse. Is any among you sick? Oh, really? So the Bible acknowledges that you can fall sick. Oh, the Bible acknowledges that sometimes the flesh can get weak. That it can be overburdened. It might not be typical sickness, out of stress. You've walked and walked and walked and the flesh is about to bow by virtue of the stress you subjected it to. He says, just in case you find yourself in that state, he says you should call for elders of the church to pray for you. And that's why tonight you'll be praying for anyone who has any element of sickness in their body. And you shall be healed tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He said they will pray over him and they will anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Next verse. He says, that prayer that you made, please, listen to me tonight. The first verse we read says, is any among you suffering? Let him pray. He didn't say let him murmur. He didn't say let him complain. Because when some of us find ourselves in certain sufferings, we tell every other person, but God, your neighbors are aware, parents are aware, children are aware. Everybody who sees you on the road is pitying you. The only person who you have not made out time to talk to about it is God. He says, if you manage to pray, if you manage to find your altar burning, if you find yourself in the tabernacle of the holy ones, and you are calling upon the name of the Lord, and your antenna is activated, connected to the throne of grace, the Bible says that the prayer of faith will do what? It will save the sick. He said the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Next verse. Because of our time, I want us to pray. He says, confess your trespasses to one another. He went ahead. He kept repeating, pray, 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 pray. He said, pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. The prayer must never be about you. It mustn't be about you. As a matter of fact, the growth you must desire is the growth of intercession. Where you have taken yourself out of the equation and you are facing the world, facing the challenges of the world and bringing it before the Father. You think Daniel didn't know how to pray about his wife and children when he was praying for the liberation of Israel. I was studying Zechariah yesterday. Zechariah also was praying. He said, and the Bible said, he opened his mouth and said to the Lord God of heaven, he said, have you not, is it not you who has kept us in Babylon for these 70 years, she was mercy. I said, wow. So it wasn't just Daniel that was praying. Zechariah was in his closet praying also. That 70 years they spent in Babylon. 
He said, if you manage to pray, and the prayer was made in faith, he says, what? It is, if the prayer is in faith, you are sure, please go back to that verse, you are sure that it's going to be effective. If you now make sure it's, please go back to that former verse. If you make sure that it's fervent, if the prayer is fervent, and the prayer is made, he told you the caliber of who must make that prayer. Can you see it there? It's not just anyone. That prayer must not be made by anyone, or else there will be no answers. Or else it will not be effective. He said it must be made by a righteous man. He said the father prayer of a righteous man. When Pastor Twenty was leading prayers, he spoke about you aligning. Prayer must be fervent. And it must be made in faith. It must be made by a certain class of people. The righteous man. The man who is at right standing with God. Righteous man. Matthew 7. 7 to 8. As we get ready to pray. I took time to lay this foundation because if you don't understand why we came here tonight, you will say, hey, this is the prayer. It's not the kind of church I want. No. No. Satan tries in lukewarmness. You wake up in the morning, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Lord Jesus, my Lord Satan, and you dash out of the door. He tries in lukewarmness. As a matter of fact, what he will do is that he will activate you more so that you become more busy. So that you will not suddenly remember the place of prayer. He gets you busy. When he was leading prayer, he said some people prayed endlessly before they came to this land. Ah, God, I beg. God, please, help me. If you help me raise this money, when you call people to help you raise money, you were praying that they do not say no to you. You apply for the visa anytime your email drops, you, th- you were praying. Suddenly, God answered. Suddenly, answer came. The person who is now at the back burner is that same God. The Bible says that if you fail in the days of adversity, so strength is small. your strength is small. It simply means that days of adversity will surely come. It will come. That's why he gave, made it a conditional statement. If you fail, adversity will come. In case some of us think that, oh, we have landed in a place where there are no more problems, visit their care homes, <laughs> visit their hospitals, with the best of the best of doctors, mm. people are screaming in pain, I'm dying, you see them, and you're wondering how, no, because the race is not to the swift. Mm. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask. When you ask of December 2022, I was leading prayer on Facebook and I said 2023 is the year the Lord is saying we must ask. Ask him, ask man. Ask anyone. Ask. I declared it 31st night. He said when you ask, it will be given to you. If you seek, you will find. Just while you are seeking, you find a door. Knock. Knock on that door. And every door has got a key. Some keys, some doors are thumbprints. Some are remote. Some are keys. Some open by his accord. But he read your sensor, he read your body before it opened. He says, if you knock at any door, it will open. Ask. A. Seek. S. K. 
What's the spelling of that? E-S-K. Ask, knock. Ask, seek, knock. This was Jesus speaking. Have you asked the Father and asked Him fervently? That's what's missing. Maybe you've not asked fervently because it's the fervent one made by a righteous man that avails much. John 14, 13. John 14, 13. Again, Jesus is repeating something. I'm laying foundation so that when we pray the next 15, for the next 15 minutes, you will have context as to why we're praying. He says, whatever. Whatever. Whatever, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. He said the reason I will do it is two things. I don't know if you can see the reasons there. One is that it's in my name. Two is that the Father may be glorified. Why do we pray in the name of Jesus? Have you wondered about it? Why can't I say, Father, in the name of Moses? Father in the name of Isaiah. Father in the name of Noah. After all, the Bible says that Noah was a righteous man. I read Ezekiel 14. And I saw where God was talking to Ezekiel about Enoch, Noah, and Job. I said, hey! And he told Ezekiel that these ones were righteous. Years after they've gone, God Telling Ezekiel about them. Why can't we pray in the name of Job? The Bible says he feared God. He has true evil. He was righteous. He was upright. What is CV? Why don't we pray in their name? Why can't you say, Father, in the name of yourself, I come by myself? No. We are not worthy before him. In order to be accepted, Jesus gave you the password. He said it has to be in my name. Meaning that when you show up in my name, the Father does not see you anymore. He sees the Son. And when you ask that, because you have presented the Son to him, he said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He's pleased over the Son. So if you come in the name of his Son, he cannot say no. He said, when you have done that, he said, the Father will do it. Why? Because the glory is going back to him. Let's rise up on our feet. Can you bring up Matthew 5, 7? If you look on the screen, the Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall do what? Obtain mercy. For they shall obtain mercy. The Bible is simply telling you from what we can, we've just read that in the realm of the Spirit, mercy is a bank. What you deposit is what you withdraw. Blessed are the merciful. Meaning you have shown mercy first. Then you can withdraw mercy. You can go to the well of mercy and withdraw from there because you've deposited mercy. Jesus repeated this statement when they said, teach us to pray. Again in prayers. He said, forgive us our trespasses as we've done what? As we've forgiven those who have trespassed against us. Mercy. I brought up this scripture so that your prayers are not hindered tonight. In case somebody has offended you, in case there's somebody you have some element of bitterness in, you just can't let go. It's deep seated. So that your prayers are not hindered tonight. Mercy is a bank. If you deposit in it, you can withdraw from it. And blessed is that man who has shown himself merciful. We're going to be praying with scriptures tonight. 
deliberately. And why I like praying, not just in tongues, but praying with scriptures, is that so long as I'm concerned, Jesus left us with two things on earth. Two. Two. Not more than two things. When he was going, he left us two things. The word and the Holy Spirit. The only two things Jesus left us with. So if you are not praying in the Holy Ghost so that he can help you interpret to the Father, you must bring the word. If not, the rest is gibberish. When they accosted him in the wilderness, he said it is written. He invoked the word. That's what he did. And Satan cannot resist the man who has the word. Exodus 5. We're going to be making some very dangerous prayers tonight. If where you are is not comfortable, feel free to walk to the back. Exodus chapter 5 from verse 1. I'll quickly read to verse 5 and then we'll pray. Afterwards, please look on the screen. Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. It was a request. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord. No, will I let Israel go? So they say, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Next verse. Then the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people from their work? Get back to your labor. Ah, child of God. Life will not respond to you just because you said it all. Life will not give you just because you ask. The break you are seeking here will not just respond because you acquire degrees. I wish it can be degrees only. Pharaoh said you are going nowhere. The Bible says he intensified their labor. Next verse. Verse 5. And Pharaoh said, look, the people of the land are many now. And you make them rest from their labor. A very simple request. He said you cannot go. You can't advance. You can't be free. Just as many things are saying no to you, the same thing say no to your father. Say no to your mother. Say no to your siblings. Say no to those in your clan, in your bloodline. He has continued to say no. And you can see he's standing in front of you that this same struggle these people went through I'm almost on the same line. The pharaohs that says you can't break free. Lift up your right hand. Say after me. My life. My life. My destiny. My destiny. My wealth. My wealth. My salvation. My salvation. Anything belonging to me. Anything belonging to me. That has been held. That has been held. Has been delayed. Has been, stagnated has been stagnated by the pharaohs of darkness. By the pharaohs of darkness. In, the in the name of Jesus, I command you to lose. I command you to lose. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. I am free by the blood. By, by the blood of the Lamb. The in the name of Jesus, name of open Jesus. your mouth and declare, offer your destiny tonight, and say that nothing, anything stagnating, anything holding, anything that is limiting, anything I say you will not break free from whatever stopped your fathers. Whatever stopped your mother, whatever stopped your siblings, whatever limited people around you, in the name of Jesus, you are breaking free. You are breaking free from the perils of darkness. You are setting yourself loose. In the name of Jesus, I will not end the way of my parents. I will go far, far beyond them. I will exceed where they were set for me. Any line drop for me, I am exceeding it. I am exceeding it. I am exceeding it. In the name of Jesus. Which wants me to labor and labor and labor and labor in vain. Pharaoh said, Multiply their labor. Pharaoh said, Multiply their labor. Labor without freedom. Labor without freedom. Labor without sorcery. Labor without breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, I am breaking through. I am breaking free. I am loose from the holes of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Second 
cannot go. First Corinthians 16. First Corinthians 16, 8 to 9. Before we take this prayer point. First Corinthians 16, 8 to 9. Look on the screen again. The same Paul. The first one was to the Thessalonians. He wanted to go to Thessalonica. Satan said you cannot go. Now he's, he's planning to go to Corinth. He said, but I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. Next verse. For a great and effectual door has opened to me. Ah! Bradford opened. United Kingdom opened. I have entered. But what is happening? He said, but there are many adversaries. There are many things that are saying no. Even though you came, let's see how you do it. Mm. Let's see how you make it. Mm. You will be busy running rat race. You will be busy everywhere. Every occasion you will be there. But you will see your mates overtaking. Paul said the door that was open is a great door. Just like you felt you left a certain land and you came to where you feel there's an opportunity. The Bible is telling you that even in the land there are adversaries. If you are not conscious of these adversaries, you are fooling yourself. You are living in delusion. You are living in self-denial that there are no adversaries. And the adversaries can be here or coming from where you are coming from. They just heard that you travel. That's all they need to hear. Oh, really? You mean his son traveled? The daughter went to where? Abroad. Eh? Okay. Why not my own children? We shall see. The Bible says that the door that was open is an effective one. The door is meant to lead you to great things. There are adversaries. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. 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 Every hindrance. Every hindrance. From Satan. From Satan. From adversaries. From adversaries. From the kingdom of darkness. From the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every action. Every action. Of the agents. Of the agents. Of darkness. Of darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and I declare. I decree and declare. I decree and I declare. Disappear. Disappear. In the name of Jesus. In the name Open your mouth and pray tonight. And every adversary, every, adversary, every hindrance, every anything every that has been sent on your way, that has said you will go but will return in shame, you will go but you will return dead, you will go but you will not see anything good. Anything. Paul said, I wanted to come. I wanted to make it. I wanted to arrive. I wanted to achieve a lot. But Satan hindered me. Satan hindered me. Satan hindered me. Satan hindered me. Raise, raise your voice tonight. Call upon the name of the Lord and speak to every voice of darkness that has said you will not prevail, that has said you will not raise, that has said you will not succeed, that has said you will not achieve. In the name of Jesus, the two set of a katata, the kuti barados, the arande set of a katanda, the kuti barados set of a katanda. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I will never be the same. I've taught your grace. My life has changed. I will never be. I've touched your grace, my life has changed. Hiya, hiya, hey, my life has changed. Hiya, hiya, hey, my life has changed. I want to pray. I want us to pray before I pray for you tonight. In case you have any sickness in your body, we have a red told us that is any among you sick? Let it go to the elders. Let it go to the brethren. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, verse 5, 
that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of peace was upon him. Ah, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And the Bible now says that by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, not that we were healed, not that we are going to be healed, we are healed. <laughs> Brethren, the ultimate will and plan of God is not divine healing, it's divine health. Two different things. The ultimate will and the plan of God for our life is not divine healing, it's divine health. But just in case Satan has struck and he hit any part of you, he says, by his Christ, you are here. I want you tonight to place your hands by faith, wherever, any part of your body where you feel you have been having pain, sickness, any form of infirmity, any form of anything, anywhere, any part of your, wherever it is. The Bible says that it has to be the prayer of a righteous man. It has to be fervent. It will be effectual if you do it that way. He said he shall be sick. He shall be made whole. In the name of Jesus, speak to the Father tonight. And declare that by his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. By his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. You who is watching us online on YouTube or Facebook. By his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus you are healed. He said, ask the Father in my name. Ask the Father in my name. Place your hands tonight. I said, place your hands. It is you that is to pray. Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Not your pastor. Not your bishop. Not your apostle. Not anyone. Let him pray. Pray for yourself tonight. Say, Lord, I am healed. Not Lord, heal me. The Bible says you were healed. Say, Lord, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed by the blood of the Lamb. I am healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. It's amazing how time flies. I want to pray for you tonight. And all I want to hear is your amen. And as you believe, you will receive. Amen. As you believe, you will receive. Amen. As you believe, you will receive. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare to Northern England. I declare to Southern England. I declare to Western England. I declare to East England. By divine authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Concerning these ones, concerning the ones watching online, I declare tonight, let this land yield an increase unto you. In the name of Jesus. Let the land yield an increase in the name of Jesus. Let the land yield an increase in the name of Jesus. May the God of Jeshurun, who rise upon the wings of the wind, May he bless you, help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I compel everything that is good in this land. In the name of Jehovah, I compel anything that is good meant to make your life better and easier to serve the Lord your God in spirit and in truth. I compel them tonight to answer to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Fresh oil upon your head. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh grace to prosper. Fresh grace to serve the Lord. Fresh grace to live for Jesus. Fresh grace to stand for the right things. Fresh grace to have the Lord leading you. In the name of Jesus. I declare that this day being the last day in the month of March. May it become a day of memorial to you. Amen. For good in the name of Jesus. Amen. I therefore declare concerning April. 
as we step into the next quarter, Father, concerning these ones and their families and their businesses and their academics and their destiny and their work with you, I draw the bloodline. I draw the bloodline. I draw the bloodline. I build a wall of fire. I build a wall of fire around you. No evil shall come near you. No your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus. May April be good to you. Amen. That congratulations you've been waiting for may it locate you in the month of April. Amen. As you step into the next quarter, the next 90 days shall be the best 90 days of your life so far. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every sickness in your body, from the very hair of your head to the sole of your feet, I speak to you sickness, you pain in the head, you pain in the chest, you pain in the leg, you pain in the waist, you stomach rumblings, wherever you have come from, by the name of the Holy One of Israel, the name of Jesus, I repeat you tonight, and I command you, go, in the name of Jesus, go, in the name of Jesus, melt and disappear, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask tonight, Lord, that you will multiply the number of angels that are keeping your own. May your angels watch over these ones. Amen. May your angels keep them. Amen. As they go out, as they come in, may they be insured. May they be insured by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, essence of days. Thank you, I am that I am. In Jesus' mighty name.